Good morning to all. A uh, warm welcome to the third session of Semiconductor Nation Campus Connect monthly webinar series, which is an initiative under Semicon India Future Skills by ISA. So under this series, uh, we are intended under this series, we are intended to cover the journey from sand to electronic system as, uh, as shown in this, oh, pardon. So under this series, we are intended to cover the journey from sand to electronic system as shown in this slide, covering one block at a time. So the previous sessions are available on our ISA's YouTube page, and this session will also be recorded and will be available. So you can revisit and watch uh, the sessions whenever you want. So these sessions can also be used by the faculties as a part of their lectures as and when suitable. So I also encourage the uh, uh, viewers here to put your questions on the chat box, which will be taken towards the end of the session. So now it brings me an immense pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Rakesh Malik, a veteran in the semiconductor domain and currently serving as a CEO of World Semi-Microelectronics. With over 35 years of experience in the semiconductor industry, he has held various engineering and senior management positions in the leading organizations. Mr. Malik is also the chair for the IEEE SSCS Delhi chapter, where he actively contributes to educational activities. He holds 12 global patents and has authored more than 40 IEEE publications. Welcome, Mr. Rakesh Malik. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, so, warm greeting uh, uh, again from uh, IESA and Verb Semi, uh, and welcome to the Campus Connect uh, webinar series. Uh, All right, so um, I'm going to share my screen now. So the topic of uh, our talk today is uh, towards building the foundation. So this is, uh, uh, as we know, you know, uh, we are going to design ICs or we are IC designers. So we should understand the basic building block of IC design. So we are going to go some depth into understanding the intellectual property core elements in system on chip. This is Rakesh Malik, uh, CEO of Versemi Microelectronics. We are a fabless company located in Delhi region. The motivation of this talk is to start understanding the system on chip and the key role of intellectual property in SOC. So that means what is the role of IPs and why they are required? What is the need of it? Is it really needed or not? Uh, building SOC from IPs, so it's like a Lego. I'm going to describe you how we can build the complex uh, SOC uh, using these IPs uh, blocks. Then we are going to go about uh, SOC application, typical SOC applications. I have few applications which uh, we have done, which industry is doing, and uh, uh, we can go through them. Uh, finally, we'll go through the SOC design flow with IP as a building block. So at the end of the session, you should be able to understand these four points. Uh, feel free to ask me questions uh, uh, write the questions and I'll be able to answer it towards the end of the session. All right, so uh, how the journey began? Uh, in, uh, we can divide this, uh, the whole journey of IC design uh, in very simplified way. So I have just put a very simplified way that there are fab fabless companies, uh, there is fabrication or fabs, and then there's a packaging house. So we broadly, we require uh, these three uh, bigger domain. So from fabless company, if you can see, there is a typical SOC. So what you need is basically a IO for communicating to the outside world. You will need, a, the outside world is usually analog. So you will need kind of analog front end kind of thing. You will need a, a supplies, LDOs, and clocks. So this is very typical way of uh, designing uh, any uh, system on chip. We will uh, see more details in coming time. Now this IC uh, is basically fabricated and uh, from fabrication fab, we get uh, wafers. 
Now these wafers have multiple IP, maybe probably thousands of ICs depending upon uh, the area. And then these are cut into dies and these dies are packaged. So that, that, that's how, you know, we get the package devices, which we use, uh, uh, which we use in our uh, day to day uh, electronics uh, uh, applications. Let's start with the foundry offering. What foundry offer and slowly we'll build towards uh, uh, IPs and their need and so on. So foundry offers a process design kit. So what is process design kit? So process design kit is a file that describes actually uh, the process and help us using EDA tool to design a chip. So what it has is it has a technology file. So this technology file has also the all the design rules and checking rules and so on. It also has device models, which is uh, like passive and active components. Their behavior are modeled here, you know, then it has a parasitic deck extraction and tech so which is through you know using that we can make schematic we can do make layouts so there are layout rules and so on indicated there finally the most important thing is a parameterized cell so that means what is available from fab is transistors registers capacitors and this parameterized cell so what is parameterized cell parameterized cell basically are basic transistors where you can vary the gate length, width, and also number of gates, and so on. So that means you can create various configuration of design. So that means if you have to design a buffer or an inverter of a particular strength, you can really vary length and width and uh, use these P cells to generate these kind of inverters. I'll take an example, basic logic gate example. So let's start with the inverter itself and the use of parameterized cell. So what is allowed and what you can do? You can vary the different drive strength. You can vary the layout aspect ratio. So that means width and length of uh, transistors you can vary here. And you can generate various uh, kind of inverters of uh, even using the different kind of transistors like there are uh, there are LVT transistors, RVT transistors. So uh, those kind of transistors, even SVT transistor as well. So you can use these kind of transistors and make the design of the inverter. So that means, and also there are options of advanced uh, requirement like body biasing and so on. So these are the variables allowed in the parameterized cell. And then you can create, no, create a uh, basic inverter. I'm just giving an example of basic inverter. So what is the problem? When we design a basic inverter, there are many parameters. And then you are required also to simulate it. That means large number of characterization simulation need to be run. And once the, uh, the simulations are run, then you can, you know, uh, you can tune your WL, you can tune your design and so on to your requirement, what you require. So, so there are, there could be, uh, uh, there, there is a requirement that uh, many logic gates are required like this. So that means you will require an inverter of various strength, various configurations and so on. Now, if each company, each SOC is going to make these kind of inverters, these kind of end gate, flip flops and so on, even memories as well. It's a problem, right? So that is what is indicated here that there is an issue with this example inverter wherein there is a lot of uh, reuse is not there. So what we require is that if there is a, some set of components available with us as a part of uh, offering from fab or from other companies, uh, then you can really go for making the SOC faster and in an efficient way. So this is the solution, you know. So this from this solution, the need of uh, libraries of IPs come in. So what is IPs? They are basic building block of the SOC. They help us for design reusability. That means you can design various SOCs using these uh, validated kind of uh, blocks or reuse them. This also lowers the system complexity. Performance guaranteed at block and hence at the system level. So once you know these blocks are validated, you can validate it once and then use it multiple times. 
So this is basically the background of uh, why we need a library of IPs and how they are useful, how we can build up. These are like Legos, you know, uh, and I'm sure that when we were a kid, uh, you would have played Lego as well. So these are Legos we can combine and make a bigger, you know, structure, which is SOC. So this is a standard cell which we were just discussing about. We discuss about inverter. So there are a lot of cells like this which are required different drive strength of inverters, many buffers with various drive strength, many gates like two input gates, three input gates, uh, AND gates, OR gates, NOR gates, flip flops, latches, SR flip flops, you know, JK flip flops, many kind of flip flops. So you require these are the basics, uh, large number of cells which are required. So you need to build these cell once. So this is how it is. The standard cells are built on the foundry transistors. You can see, see an example here for one of the gates. So you need to build it once, characterize it once, and uh, make different strength, whatever you feel is required. You cannot make infinite number of strength, but for sure there will be, you know, different definitive uh, uh, strength level. You can make these kind of uh, uh, IPs, and then they will be reused by all SOC using standard digital design flow. Now we are just talking about the digital design flow, which is standard cell libraries. So this one is, we call it as a foundation IP, one of the foundation IP, all right? So this is SOC parameter. The SOC parameter is that we need to have foundation IPs. I will discuss in detail about this. One example, we just, show, just saw it. Then there are little more complex IPs, which is subsystem IPs. We will be discussing about this. Uh, these are more than and and uh, or gates. They they are more complex uh, in terms of functionalities and so on. And then come the system IP. So many subsystem IP will make a system IP, and then all together foundation IP, subsystem IP, system IP will make system on chip. Even you know nowadays uh, uh, there are chiplets. So that means even system on chips uh, which are available on the various. Uh, uh, applications, they could be stacked together to form a even more complex system on chip. So we'll be discussing something about that as also. So we'll go by one by one uh, through this pyramid, uh, starting from foundation IP. So another foundation IP uh, besides standard cell is memory. You know, any design is not completed without memory. And these memory uh, are of various type, SRAM, E flash, ROM. So you can see all those kind of memories you must have studied in your college time and uh, must have gone through it. And we require uh, to generate uh, these memories of various configuration. Now, how to generate it? Again, you know, it should be an automated method through which we can generate these memories. And these are generated by memory compilers. So you can see here, there is an example here, there is a bit cell. So that means you can see there is address coming here to select the row or column. And then there are sense amplifier or drivers, which can really apply uh, the current that this bit cell is going to need. So this is one bit cell. And then these bit cells can be arranged to form a memory of your requirement. Now these memory compilers, they are mostly software, but they have these basic components. So that means you will have a bit cell component, you will have a row decoder component, you will have a sense amplifier component and column decoder component. And using this, you can generate memories of various configuration. So again, it's a foundation IP and we should be able to generate very fast. And these memory, uh, usually, you know, when you generate memories, uh, uh, you will validate them in separate test chips of various configurations. So the you can say that the longest memory, the smallest memory, the memory having very less number of rows, but more column, you know, more wide and more, uh, uh, you know, in terms of length. So all these kind of configurations need to be validated before, you know, it is getting offered as a foundation IP. Another foundation IP uh, is IOs and library. So you need to communicate outside with the outside world. Now you have memory, you have uh, standard cells, you need to communicate uh, with uh, using IOs to the outside world. So that means you will need IO pads, you will need supply, but your chip definitely will need supply. There are sometimes bidirectional IOs also needed. You also need to take care of uh, electrostatic discharge. So that means uh, uh, 
this is required because you are going to somebody is going to handle the chip you know so your chip should also have some kind of uh, electrostatic protection inside you will need clocking inside the chip which is uh, either by crystal oscillator rc oscillator ring oscillator and pll i'm sure you must have seen uh, pll's uh, in your uh, college uh, syllabus and uh, must have gone through it that what kind of uh, clocking it's going to generate it is very common block in almost every chip inside another foundation ip is the power management so that means uh, you are getting supply from outside either through a battery or it is you know coming uh, directly uh, from a supply so you need uh, some kind of uh, converters inside and uh, load dropout uh, uh, kind of uh, power management so these are the some of the power management uh, blocks that you must have seen it's a power management unit ldos references references are very you know accurate kind of supply that is required for some of the chips again you know to make the supply up and down there are buck and boost converters and so on so these are you know power management is hard again and it's one of the foundation ips uh, which will be used inside the sock we come to the second level which is a subsystem level so subsystem level uh, they are complex ips they are uh, one level more complexity the reason being here is that they will con consist of multiple blocks take an example of uh, so these are some analog front end so that means when you are going to transmit or receive signal so that means from antenna if things are if uh, you are receiving the signal which is a rf signal you need to convert it into the baseband this is one way of coming so there is a local oscillator there is a multiplier here you go inside this and then you have analog to digital converter outside world is always analog once you come inside it is more digital and then you can have a digital front end optional if you want which could be you know uh, down sampling because you will come to the baseband now you know from rf you will come to the baseband and then uh, here you are going to perform on the baseband so this is one typical uh, receive path and also uh, if you look at it uh, in terms of transmit path you will see there is a up converter here there is a d2a converters again here and then again you are going to convert it into the rf range and then it is going to get transmitted through antenna so these are typical applications of analog front end wherein there is uh, there is a uh, ADC, there is uh, gain amplifiers and so on that are getting involved. There, there are various standards which are available in terms of RF uh, AFE. So typically what we have seen is a RF AFE, which is having RF front end and then uh, all the conversions here and then uh, working on the digital part of it. So you can, uh, you can see here there are standards like Wi-Fi. I'm sure everybody uses Wi-Fi. They know Radar as well. WLAN as well. So these are, you know, some of the subsystem IPs in terms of uh, RF. There are also IPs. Uh, we are going to discuss more details about the high speed link. As you know, uh, as the things are becoming more, uh, uh, you know, um, system oriented. So there are very specific links which are available, which could be used uh, in various application. For example, MIPI is one standard which is used in camera and display. HDMI is more for video and USB, everybody knows, you know. So USB is again, you know, a complex kind of subsystem block. So let's go to the next step. So now we have understood uh, foundation IP, subsystem IPs of various complexity with one example, um, system IP. So which is even more complex. So I'm sure you, uh, everybody uses uh, phone and uh, laptop and so on so there are cpu cores multiple cpu cores which are available inside one chip you see 8 core 10 core 16 core and so on so these are basically uh, there are some uh, examples uh, uh, like arm and risk uh, these are you know some of the standards uh, uh, cpus uh, core available uh, in the market risk is uh, is a uh, is a free standard which can be used uh, arm is having good ecosystem as well so that means when i talk about ecosystem that means not only the core is required but there are interfaces there are 
peripherals which are required. So that means you will require various kinds of interfaces. Sometimes, you know, SPI, I squared C, UR, timer, and so on. Many, many, many of them actually. So this is a complex IP and this is called system IP. So we go to the next level, which is, so we are slowly arriving to the now the SOC time. So we have understood uh, most of the things uh, in this journey. So what is SOC? So we can just concentrate on this box first. So every outside word mostly is analog word. So that means this analog signal will require a signal conditioning like we saw the RF front end and so on. Uh, it will require a A2D converter and then we are inside this, now we are digital. Digital is, you know, much easier to handle inside the chip. Similarly, after handling, uh, you can pass it from D to A. So that means again, it's analog and then again, signal conditioning and it's going to the analog word outside. Now you can see there are various examples here. One example is sensor and actuator. So you can see here the, when you are receiving from outside, any kind of uh, sensing like temperature, pressure sensors and so on. And then you do, for example, there is an example of tire pressure monitoring system. How do you do that? There is a sensor, you take initially conditioning inside, you do all kinds of functioning, and then you can even throw that analog out if you want. If you don't want to throw the analog out, then in that case, you can just show the pressure on your display and so on. Similarly, for the audio application here, uh, you can see there is a mic. So mic is again analog. So again, it will come through this. There is a A2D converter required here. You can do all kind of uh, functioning of, uh, uh, of the audio. And then finally, you can throw this out to the speaker or the headphone. So you are able to, you know, listen on the headphone or the speaker. Similarly, for the, for any kind of applications, which is, uh, you know, for example, uh, there is uh, radar, there is optical network, you know, these kind of uh, functioning, you will require a, antenna or a Wi-Fi uh, or a wireless kind of system. So any these system, again, you know, they will pass through uh, the signal conditioning or the RF front end going to the AF, uh, ADC, and then it can be thrown out to the transmit path and it, it the signal can be sent outside. So there are various applications, audio we just understood, uh, hard disk drive and printer. These are the application where, you know, the sensing is required. You have to read the hard disk drive. So again, that, that is a, there is a sensor there to read it. And then you write it back to the hard disk drive as well. Microcontroller has a lot of application, including GPIO and so on. So you can uh, do all kind of sensor based application and microcontroller. You can measure temperature, voltage and so on and do all kind of thing. Similarly, uh, if you go to the battery management system, your battery, need to be monitored that how much charging it has. If it is not charged, then it has to be charged. Again, you know, there are various applications available there. Automotive in terms of engine control, everything, you know, uh, they are getting more and more electronics inside uh, uh, automotive. Almost, you know, more than $2,000 of uh, uh, electronics is available inside, you know, the leading brands. So it has a lot of applications there. You can see cable, setup box, TV, and so on, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, WiMAX, uh, NFC, uh, in, in your uh, phone, you will see Bluetooth, you will see NFC, and then there are some kind of uh, high-speed applications, which is precision applications, uh, for which, again, uh, you require these kind of analog front ends. And finally, you, everybody knows 5G and RF and even uh, uh, the radar, uh, the automotive radar, these are, you know, some of the happenings uh, uh, in the technology that is uh, going on I immediately. Uh, uh, recently, we also see a lot of work on imaging as well. Optical network goes in few gigahertz kind of uh, frequency. So, so every application has its own challenges. Audio is slow, like 20 kilohertz. Then battery management is precision. It's like it will require higher precision kind of ADCs like 24 bit and so on. Automotive is will require, uh, it's a challenge because automotive has to be really robust kind of thing. So it has to be 
six sigma qualifications uh, minus 40 to 150 degree qualifications and so on so every field has its own challenge then if we come to 5g it's gigahertz kind of uh, frequency so the kind of adcs dex and uh, kind of signal conditioning is really working at gigahertz similarly for optical network so every uh, application is a challenge but essentially it will require these kind of uh, very specialized ips let's take another example which is a processor sock so this is a complex uh, uh, processor sock uh, which you can see here it's based around risk you can see there is memory required here there is error correction code which is there there are many blocks which is in terms of uh, uh, processor you can see uh, there are interfaces required so for example usb interface uh, outside for automotive you require can bus there are adcs and temperature sensors which can be connected to uh, as i gave an example of hard disk drive uh, bms and various sensor application even temperature sensor is also very uh, uh, very useful you know so there are various uh, kind of temperature sensors available inside hdmi is mainly for display similarly uh, you need to have audio in and out so uh, there will be you know for mic and speaker uh, for camera and display uh, there are interfaces like MIPI uh, it's CSI and DSI these are the interfaces which are available along with MIPI interface standard which can be connected to this camera outside similarly for RF in and out uh, uh, you know uh, there are various applications either wired or non-wired for various uh, things so you can see the kind of foundation IP that we require IO definitely we need to connect it to the outside world you need SRAM flash, you need PLL, you need uh, power management, digital IPs, many of them digital IP. Then come the subsystem IPs like AFEs. So you can see here there are uh, ADCs and AFEs required. You can see here high speed link, uh, MIPI, uh, HDMI, USB, all those things are there. And then finally the system core here. So you have uh, the system core and then everything connected. So it's a complex. Uh, processor sock so that also is is it's it become a almost like a system ip so you can make it and you can use it in multiple places if you want there are very specific uh, sock which is called analog front end sock so uh, by the way versemi has designed many uh, uh, many ic's many uh, socks this is one of the example you know uh, uh, so this uh, this these are multiple uh, applications uh, it can be used for industrial process control it can be used for temperature pressure monitoring and even the energy metering you know uh, everybody uh, in the house had, has a uh, energy meter so the power need to be measured so that means the voltage current phase and so on so these these kind of chips can do these kind of uh, uh, complex calculation and measurement uh, so these are basically a subsystem AFEs. So you can see here, uh, there is a power management requirement here. There are standard cells and RAMs. There are analog front end. So not only the ADCs, but there are some amplifiers which are required there. And then some kind of clocking. And of course you need IOs uh, to connect it from outside. You need very much precision references in some of, uh, some of the applications. So these are predominantly analog and uh, less of digital this is more of digital and uh, uh, maybe i would say 50 50 content in terms of analog and digital or maybe 60 40 uh, more of digital there another example 5g sock so again uh, 5g is uh, uh, is the standard which is coming in and now people have started working even in 6g as well so you need uh, multiple antenna system here for uh, for 5g uh, there could be multiple socks, so it could be a RF sock and digital sock, or maybe it can be combined together. So ultimately, again, you know, through this multiple antenna, there could be there are various complex uh, blocks which is beam forming and so on uh, inside uh, this. These are the technology which is used in 5G, and uh, then you do a kind of a convergence to baseband, and then uh, you have uh, what we just saw 
you will have adcs and then you will have some kind of high speed interface uh, which can take it to another digital sock and there you can perform all the digital and digital signal processing kind of stuff and then bring it back on the receive path uh, on the transmit and the receive path so that means this is uh, transmitting path and this is uh, receive path so same antenna is available there so here uh, the subsystem requirement is afes um, risk again it could use a uh, risk or arm processor inside this as well or outside this there are many dsp blocks are there there are high speed links block uh, which is running in a uh, few giga uh, gigahertz uh, to take it outside from this RF SOC to digital and then coming back as well. So this is a, just an example of uh, 5G SOC, uh, uh, which is an extension of the previous example. Uh, another example is automatic camera and display SOC. So you can see here uh, in your car, uh, uh, you have multiple cameras and then you have a display as well. So MIPI is one standard in which uh, the camera get handled uh, in a very high speed manner. So uh, you can have multiple camera modules here. You, you will have a ethernet switch and then uh, MCU. Of course, you will need LDO and uh, supplies here. And then you can have a display module. So that means you can, you can see your car uh, and then all kind of processing uh, car uh, can be done by, uh, by the MCU here and display it uh, on your, uh, on your display in the car. So this is uh, basically used in ADAS, uh, which is more on the on the um, on uh, the safety of the car when it is going higher speed and uh, it has to sense. Uh, so remember, in this case, uh, it has to sense from multiple location. It will have to uh, uh, it will have to find out uh, uh, what is the object. So there is a lot of AI getting involved inside this. And then uh, it will have to uh, uh, assist driver to stop the car or help in reducing the speed and so on. Going further, uh, the complex uh, IPs and chiplets. So this is another uh, area uh, wherein uh, uh, now we have seen there is SOC here. This is one die, right? Uh, within the within the same uh, Within the same IC, we can also have stacking of the dice. So it could be a 2D stacking or 3D stacking. So you can see these two dice getting connected to the organic substrate or through interposer or through RDL layer. You know, so there are two. Uh, there is possibility of 2D connections like this, wherein two different dice or chiplets can be connected, and then uh, we can sell it as one sock inside. Okay. So these are complex socks. Uh, you can do 3D stacking as well. Uh, for example, if you have to make DRAM for higher density and so on, you can do this kind of stacking here. You can also send, uh, stack the sensors and the logic and on the 3D logic. So what is the advantage of uh, uh, using these chiplets? So the chiplets are not common substrate and then hence the routing resistance is lesser than PCB. So definitely they are better than PCB. Stacking has the benefit of small die size. Uh, dies could be of different technology. So you can keep, uh, for example, we know that analog does not, uh, uh, you know, shrink with the technology while the digital shrink with the technology. So you can have a two different dies. One uh, uh, on the lower technology node where area gain is there and the cost is high. Uh, those could be in digital uh, ICs could be there, digital dies could be there, and the analog die could stay in the older technology node, like you know 55, 65, uh, 22 nanometers, and so on. While the new digital uh, uh, sock could be in uh, you know 5 nanometer or 8 nanometers, those kind of technology nodes. So you can really have a cost benefit because, and then you will have you are able also you able to use the pre-validated sock. So the time to market is uh, is good because this is like uh, becoming a library element. So one die become like a library element for you and you can use it. Uh, disadvantages, complex packaging has to work on reliability. All those things are there, uh, but the technology is coming up. This is uh, the slide which shows about the SOC design flow, which is the last part of our topic. Uh, it's a complex slide. I will just focus.
focus on few points so that you are able to understand uh, a typical SOC design start with the SOC spec definition. We select the fab and the process node as well, you know. Then comes system partitioning. So we divide the system like, for example, as we saw previously, how much memory is required, how much IOS is required. If you require a CPU, um, what kind of ADC is required, what kind of AFE is required, RF is required, and so on. Do you require MIPI? Do you require USB? And so on. So you have to make decision on the IP. Um, these foundation IPs like standard cell memories, IOs, and even these uh, some of the foundation IPs like PMUs, PLL, and RC oscillator, they are sometime available from the foundry itself. Or there are IP providers who can provide these kind of IPs. So you can look. Uh, so whenever somebody is designing uh, a chip, he can look for IPs, validated IPs uh, from outside companies, fabless companies, and so on. And there could be subsystem IPs like AFE, high speed link, and system level IP. These are usually soft IPs. The other one are mostly the hard IPs. So once you make the decision here, then you start doing the analog design yourself. So you make analog design, you make analog system uh, layout, so some of the IPs you can reuse and connect and so on. For digital, it's mostly soft IP, including the processor. So you go through a process of synthesis and place and route. So there is a verification involved here, a verification involved here. And then comes the mixed signal verification, because now you have validated the analog part, the digital part, and then you verify it together. And finally come the SOC level analysis. So you need to do a lot of analysis on SOC level, like you do uh, IR analysis, uh, ESD, signal and power integrity, density check for fab and so on. So many, many things are done at the chip level. Those kind of analysis are there. And finally, you give GTS delivery to foundry for fabrication. Now let's look at, look at this part. This is important and uh, this could be valuable. Uh, So this is uh, these are the some of the expertise domain uh, system level architectures, analog design, analog layout, RTL synthesis and place and route, digital uh, verification, mixed leg signal verification, SOC level working model. All right, so uh, I'm towards the end of my lecture session. So this is a summary of learning so far. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, we have gone through the basic elements. We have gone through the IP uh, existing systems, uh, understanding of SOC and brief understanding of uh, design flow of uh, SOC and expertise domain. Thank you. Thanks a lot uh, for your attention. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thanks again. Thank you, Mr. Malik, for giving our viewers, uh, you know, such an such an understanding on IPs for SOC. Uh, so maybe like now we are open for the questions. So there are a few questions uh, which are posted, and we'll uh, look forward to you to share, like, you know, share your view, share your views on those. Uh, so maybe I'll start the first with that. If a student is in, interested in this field, at what sort of skills or knowledge? should he or she uh, prioritize so as to excel in working with uh, IP in SOC design? So in fact, um, uh, nowadays uh, we are at the college, we are almost equipped with all the EDA tools. So that means uh, we have curriculum, which is more oriented towards uh, uh, analog and digital kind of. So first he need to find out whether, which kind of area he's interested in. And then later on, uh, these kind of uh, tools are available in most of the colleges. These uh, EDA design tools. So one can really start designing very small kind of uh, blocks. Uh, maybe start with inverter and go up to op amps and then go up to uh, design of even design of ADCs or PLL 
uh, one can do all those kind of things. Um, uh, I guess uh, these kind of uh, uh, things can are self-driven, but now the means are there. Uh, in our time, we did not have so much means uh, earlier. Uh, so uh, I would suggest that uh, first make your fundamentals strong and then uh, use all the facilities available in your college. If it is not available, there are training institute arts out, outside as well. So one can go like that. Uh, thank you. So I put forward a question which was which is shared by Mr. Uh, Narsimha Muthi Kesi. So he is asking that how about fundament? Uh, pardon, uh, so uh, can we get access to foundation IPs for basic combinational sequential and memory circuits? Yes. So in fact, uh, uh, when you have a, a PDK from a fab, then these things are available from fab itself. So that means the foundation IP is like uh, uh, basic gates, memories, they are all available uh, either from the foundry or from their foundry partners. So for example, the foundry partners are ARM or any other companies, they would be able to uh, support those kind of things uh, from foundry. So usually uh, when uh, when you have the technology, your, uh, your college or your institute has the uh, technology from any of the fab uh, like TSMC or Samsung, those things are available. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, another question from Mr. Bala Sindhuri uh, Kandula. So he's asking, can we have access to internal circuit diagram for the IPs available in standard libraries? So um, they, they are sometime available. They are sometime available, but you are not allowed to copy them. You can use them. Uh, so these sometimes these kind of schematics are available for AND gates and NOR gates and so on. But if you look at complex kind of uh, system kind of subsystem kind of IPs, then they are not available. Like for example, if you ask for PLL circuit diagram, you can find it out from research or from IT, IEEE publications and so on. And you can really use them, that is not a problem, or PhD thesis and so on. But uh, from the IP provider or from the, uh, you know, uh, these kind of subsystem IPs are generally available at hard block. There is no schematic available uh, for them. Schematics are available at the flat level sometime only for simulation purpose. But uh, nobody will give the design know-how outside for the subsystem and system level kind of thing. Now, in case of uh, um, core like ARM or RISC, you have access to soft. So soft means everything is available. So you can really go inside the RTL, you can modify it and so on. Um, ARM is a open. Uh, uh, ARM is not an open core, but uh, RISC is an open core. So uh, there, you know, you have more flexibility uh, to modify those kind of digital thing. But in terms of analog IPs, uh, there are mostly hard blocks available. Uh, thank you. Uh, so maybe like we'll have a, a couple of more questions. So like if a student, like if I'm talking from point of view of the students, so what are some common challenges or pitfalls that the students might encounter? when they are dealing with IP in SOC design and how can they overcome these? So in fact, the, the major point about the IP is uh, the technology it is evolving in terms of uh, performances. So uh, once you have to uh, start, you need to know what is the state of art. Mm -hmm. So you should know from basic, like for example, if you say, okay, I need to design a PLL, okay, what is the specifications required in the system? Is it really uh, easy or it's not easy, you know? So those kind of specification is a big challenge in terms of IPs. Power is a big challenge, area is a big challenge. So these are, you know, some of the challenges from analog perspective. From digital perspective, it is more complexity, more kind of functions getting, getting inside, and uh, there will be challenges in terms of meeting the timings as you know, the SOC size is growing, the timing of the chip, you know, inside uh, of each, you know, flip flop, which is going inside the circuit and so on. So all those things are a challenge as well. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll just post one, two more questions. Uh, so, like, uh, so what are the emerging trends or technologies in the field of uh, SOC IP that the students should be aware of for the future? Like, if they are in, uh, say, for in their first semester or in the second or third semester, and once they are graduating, 
So like these are the technologies they should expect that they'll see in the future. So in fact, uh, I would expect that from college, when you uh, are graduated from college, you should be aware about uh, uh, some basic IPs, even, you know, the technology, uh, technology is not, uh, is, is emerging for sure it is, but one can learn those technologies once because the access of the new technology will not be there in the college time. You will not have access to eight nanometer, FinFET or five uh, nanometer or three nanometers and so on. These are the emerging technologies. But that kind of exposure, once you have the basic ready for you inside the college, you know, in terms of uh, design fundamentals, in terms of uh, knowledge, know-how and so on, even with the old technology node, it is not a problem to go ahead and uh, uh, come to the industry where you can learn in the new technology, where you have access to it. Yeah, very well said, Mr. Malik, that uh, the foundation or basic should be clear so that to understand to build up the, to create the building on top of that. Right. Uh, so uh, one last question, uh, like if I, uh, like how, since uh, the students, they have a different sort of uh, constraints or, you know, different sort of uh, uh, bondings or uh, which, which they visualize when they are, uh, during the, during their post structure or during their uh, time in the academia. So like, uh, how can they ensure that the, their IP is secure while they're working on any SOC project? That what things they should keep in mind or what things they should follow so that they're, uh, they are sure that their IP is secure. Okay. So uh, in terms of security of the IP, um, uh, IP is al almost secure because you are not passing on the, uh, the design information outside, right? So that is one thing. Second is that uh, uh, you can protect your IP by, uh, by uh, patents. So that is uh, another possibility. So you can, uh, uh, you can file the patents uh, within India, then uh, you can file it in US as well. Uh, if you file a patent in India and then if you take it to US, you have a priority up to one year, you know, from here. So this is another possibility. Uh, there is another possibility uh, wherein you can um, uh, you can uh, protect your IP is uh, GDS merge at Foundry. So that means these IPs are sometime merged at Foundry, and uh, uh, only models and uh, the basic things are given to uh, the SOC uh, company. So uh, there again, you know, um, there is one more level of protection that happens. But uh, usually you can protect it by patent for sure. Uh, that is the right way. Uh, thank you. So I think this uh, patent awareness among the students is something we should uh, focus at very uh, in, in a very intensive manner. Thank you so much. Thank you so, for your time. Yeah. So there are like a few questions which came up. So I'll just take that. Maybe we have some time. Uh, yeah. So there is a question from Mr. Sai Goripati. So he is asking that can you explain role of FPGA? on SOC prototyping and development. All right. So um, in fact, um, uh, in one of the design flow, I put this as a small block there. So uh, sometime, you know, uh, what happens is that uh, you require uh, some kind of logic to be validated, which is more digital kind of logic, or maybe having very small analog contents. So uh, you can really use a FPGA, map your system inside, and use some discrete component, some analog discrete component outside, and you can validate uh, your logic. So this is good way, actually, because uh, once you uh, once you uh, write RTL, you go through the flow, and uh, when you go inside SOC, then it is very difficult to change because every then you have to do a, another spin of it. So uh, these FPGA has a bigger role in terms of uh, validation of. Uh, uh, the IP, uh, the digital IP in the early stage, for sure. So it plays a role at the beginning itself. Uh, most of the logic get validated there. Another possibility of FPGA, which is coming up uh, recently and it's a trend is that you will have a chip, uh, a SOC with FPGA. So there is, there is something called eFPGA. So you can put the uh, FPGA inside the chip and also your analog and digital all together, and you can make a complex chip. 
So here you have a possibility of uh, changing the digital letter in a certain manner. So this is another way later on. So there are some socks which are available with FPGA, small FPGA inside where you have a flexibility. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so there are a few uh, suggestions also from our viewers. So we'll uh, keep, uh, we'll try addressing those and we'll keep uh, keep those in mind. And also, like uh, there, uh, if you have any other questions on any other queries, feel free to write back to us, and we'll try responding uh, to those. And thank you, thank you, Mr. Rakesh Malik, for you know giving us, giving our viewers, the students, and the faculties who are who have joined us or who will be seeing these. Uh, in the course of time, so giving them a you know, detail about uh, about this uh, this domain of uh, about this domain, and giving them a walkthrough about the IPs for SOC. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing sharing your insight and knowledge with all of us. Thank you once again, and uh, thank you Aisa for this uh, uh, beautiful initiative. Uh, I would say it would be really useful for uh, for students and faculty, and it will give a direction towards semiconductor you know, enhancement in India. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us and uh, watching, uh, watching us live. So thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. So sure. Hello, Manoji. No, no, you have done it completely. Oh, somehow I'm not able to hear you.